Kira had been told she was strong most of her life. By her parents, her sisters, random torch residents, most recently a talking candle. She figured if you heard it from an inanimate object, you'd probably be best off believing it. And really, she'd never had a problem with that part. She could remember long hours of the forge with her father, able to carry on and he got tired, or training with Parda, surprising her older friend with unexpected stamina. Kira was strong. She knew that. But what good was strong if you couldn't protect anyone? What difference did strong make when everyone around you was gone? She'd been strong when Parda died. Vargas, too. Kira swallowed hard and tried not to think about how strong she'd be by the time she let Asher or Brixby down. They'd tried to help, of course, in their own way. For some reason, Asher had given her space, Brix had gone his usual pep talk route, pretending him suggesting the canister had anything to do with her destroying it. She was too tired to argue with him, but they both knew she didn't believe him. Not when he'd already showed her he could be wrong. Not when he was staring at her looking almost dead gray instead of normal rat gray. Somewhere in the back of her mind, the candle person's words echoed, Maybe you should get angry. Fine. Maybe she would. This is Pod Against the Machine. Pod Against the Machine. Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only actual play podcast that bashes open a giant canister of toxic gas right in your face. I'm your host, and here's everybody. Uh, the the stinking clouders are now the stinking cloudies. <laughs> I'm stinking clouded. Hello. Hey. Hi. Is poison gas the new punch in the face? You have to keep listening to find out, scrappers. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, previously on the show, what even happened? It was, it was a while ago. The party, after having defeated the Gearsman, journeyed deeper into whatever this ruin is, uh, cracked open another door and found like a super Gearsman, uh, just a big old shiny laser holding Gearsman. Uh, they destroyed it pretty quickly. Uh, which was very sad on account of it was, you know, a boss. You're not supposed to just kill the boss. It's mean. Um, and then they went down. They found some gas masks uh, labeled, like, you know, in, use in case of poisonous gas. Uh, they went south a little bit farther, found a big old heavy door that said, you know, like, danger poisonous gas on it. Um, and then they, they cracked that bad boy open. Um poisonous gas came out and everybody almost died especially Brixby. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair usually when you go somewhere and they have like one of those signs they mean that it's like hermetically sealed in a canister somewhere like not that you open the door and it blasts out into your face <laughs> it was just waiting behind the door like just like <laughs> looking out that window going oh man i'm gonna gas all over these people I think we did the right thing by freeing the gas. Yeah. Really? You're welcome. Yeah. Toxic <laughs> you can go gas. Live its own life now. <laughs> yeah, so it's not like we it be his lungs. It's like we were trying to investigate what was poisoning the water of a town and thought, you know what could certainly help if we just release a whole bunch of, you know, decayed mutagenic fumes mm -hmm. to really kind of help aerate the soil. Live moss yeah. with toxic gas. <laughs> yeah, the poison gas is played by Tim Curry, and it's going to get a real cool uh, musical number later on. On the plus side, now you know what's polluting the soil. Or at least, you know, seems likely. Yeah, but do we? Because that was locked up, and it's also a gas, not anything that would get into the soil. So I feel like we still haven't learned that. It cancels out the initial pollution. <laughs> well, it's almost as if we'll have to investigate the room with which the gas came out of. No. Let's, determine that. let's keep talking about it. We should lick it. I mean, it. I guess we'll be talking about it either way. Speaking of, where are we? Uh, where are we? <laughs> well, you where did I go am. Where's out, everybody else? <laughs> you did go out of the ruins after almost dying and, you know, did a little healing, 
camped out on the abandoned farm, uh, did a little more healing in the morning, uh, sent Kira down to see if it was still poisonous, since she's the hardiest of the group. Um, she didn't die right away, so everybody went down, and that's where we are now. A key part of that is we did find masks. They didn't just send yeah. Kira down. They're like, go, go no. breathe that air and see if it kills yeah. you. They specifically said, no mask, Kira. Go You're on. You're not old enough to wear a mask. Masks are for adults. <laughs> Boys, put on your own mask before helping a child. <laughs> yeah, I can assume we're all wearing our... Yeah, we're all wearing our masks, like, with our fingers an inch away from the button at all times. Except Asher. So, um, remind me, we are, at least all of us, except for Alwyn, who I assume has succumbed to the fumes. Yeah, where is everybody else? I'm at the entrance. Uh, yeah. We're inside? We're, we're near where yeah. we killed oh, Gary Newman. No, that's dead robots. We're, that's more dead robots. That's, we killed a lot of robots in here. <laughs> yeah, just go past the string of corpses. Just follow the trail. Well, we sniffed. It seems fine. I, I was just thinking, since we got the the masks and we seem to have released all of the deadly vapors, uh, perhaps we take a look at the same room that we, you know, with the with the triangles. Now, I could be wrong. This could be a terrible idea because I, I clearly had one last time, but like there can't be a second gas, right? Right. Surely. <laughs> There's no possible way. Um, to be clear, in that round room that you have opened and left open on account of the door being destroyed by a chainsaw, um, that opens regular into- sword. That opens into like a cylindrical room that's about uh, 20 feet in diameter. Uh, and on the southwest and southeastern side, there are more of those big, thick bulkhead doors labeled biohazard. Um, so despite what my dynamic lighting may be telling you, those doors are closed. Got it. Okay, but the other... These doors at the bottom are closed. Everything else in the middle is open. Yeah, you got this wonderful... Yeah circle to play with yeah because the door that asher is standing at is the one that we the ripped open, open with an adamantine sword <laughs> bashed it good <laughs> when it wouldn't let us in so these are more blasty doors that will also have to be adamantine yeah uh, seems that way so we in order to save charges we wait till the door is at like 99 percent destroyed and we're gonna press those buttons is what asher would recommend press press which button? the uh, gas mask the, button oh gas. to activate yeah we don't need to put them on now if it's going to take 38 minutes to you know to break a door open we have them on but not activated oh. and, and these are powered doors correct right like there's no side of them that have some sort of like bulkheady spinny doodle okay it doesn't seem to be they're they're powered doors and there is no power with which to release them well i for no reason in particular uh would love to go through that bottom right door. Just feel drawn to it. Sounds good to me. Gonna get to bashing. Kira's gonna start bashing. Izzy is struggling with moving their avatar. All right. Well, uh, with the adamantine uh, great sword, it takes a little bit, but you could dig your way through that very thick metal door. Um, to everybody clicking on those gas masks. Yuppers. Yeah. <laughs> One finger click mm-hmm. on a gas mask, then the other uh, will, with the other hand, just turn around and like shield at part of Asher's face. It's gas, so like, you know, it'll travel around. But uh, uh, let it not be said we didn't try. Here, Asher, chew on this uh, horse to warm her. It works just as well, <laughs> from what I've heard. Inject it right into your Perhaps body. You should shield Alwyn's face. His fortitude is. The third of yours? You know, there's opportunity <laughs> for improvement. <laughs> I think it's room for growth. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna mosey on. In. Well, so we haven't been struck yet. Um. Well, once you break through, after everyone's had a second to activate their masks, except Asher, of course, who has no mask on. Uh, you get another burst of the gas, oh, and man. it just seeps out of this um, semi-pressurized giant tank as it looks like this is just a lot 
of tanks of this gas, and I'm going to need a fortitude save from Asher. Woohoo! Uh, that's a natural 16 for a 31. All right, he's good. Everyone else is wearing gas masks. So, Asher, maybe you should... Nope, you can't bash through that door. Just kidding. Do we see anything in this new chamber? It literally just looks like it was a big canister full of gas, and that gas is slowly leaching out and expanding into the rest of the (laughs) ship. Definitely murdering everyone in town. Let's get more (laughs) open. (laughs) We'll fan that back in. Ooh, maybe with the chainsaw? Can you get, can we get a breeze going there? Are are we frackers? Are we currently <laughs> fracking? Right you now? appear to be hydro fracking or adamantine <laughs> fracking. Worse. As the case yeah. may be. Fantasy EPA is going to be so angry with us. <laughs> so so should we still open this other door? Yeah. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Great. My I'll fourth wall <laughs> senses are telling me this one may have different stuff behind it. It's got to. <laughs> uh, the comedy <laughs> rule of threes. Just keep trying canisters. <laughs> um, while you're whacking the canisters, uh, Asher, can I get another fort save? Oh, oh that one's a nat 20 for a 35. All right, you're good again. <laughs> no. I think permanently with that nat 20. Um, weirdly, it just, like, you're just still breathing this gas. Huh. So every let's say minute you're gonna have to do it again um pretty much indefinitely at this point as the world is gas now yeah Uh, (laughs) that's right ladies and gentlemen hope finder (laughs) (laughs) we have accidentally unleashed the z plague into numeria and from there the world oops we're switching our mechanics over now everybody get your flashbacks ready (laughs) all right three actions all hope finder um, so while Kira is hacking away at this, let's, it probably takes more than a minute. So another save from Asher. Does Asher want to wait on the other side of the yeah, door outside. we can still <laughs> seal? Um, no, uh, lower, only a 22 total. Yeah, he's still good. Oh man, Kira bashes through into this next tank, revealing da 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 another tank, another <laughs> gust of uh, that toxic, toxic gas. And this tank has um, three more bulkhead doors on it. Looks like it branches off into tanks in all cardinal directions, like it's some kind of central tank. But there's there's no telling how many of these things there are. Uh, can no I get a fort save from Asher? Okay. Can I go back and close one of the other doors? I don't want to trap Asher in here with the gas, but like it does I feel mean, like you, we're. You've been chopping the doors. How are you going to close them? Uh, one of the non-chopped doors are those are those available to close? Um, these doors are closed. These three down here that you can still see are closed, uh, but these three chopped ones they're they're open for good. Fantasy flex seal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, different die went. You know, got a twenty earlier on the Omega dice by Dice Envy. This legendary pants D twenty is another nat twenty. For 35 again. Wow. I think two nat 20s, I gain a level. Is that how it works? Mm-hmm. Probably. Sweet. Um, so what's, <laughs> what's the plan here, folks? Can we... Let's maybe do some perceptions at some doors <laughs> here. We've just been, like, bashing. And before we go into more hum tanks, let's put our ears up against these and figure out what we're doing. Can we hear the gas? Yeah. I mean, the only way to prevent some evil power from using this gas for nefarious purposes is to just take care of it ourselves. Take that ozone layer. (laughs) Is to just (laughs) use it for accidental purposes. I'm becoming mutated, aren't I? (laughs) Probably. There's a cool mutated template. uh, Uh, It's a natural 20 for a I have a sandwich label plus this time. Wow. Uh, 32. So, um, I think... I will listen at the furthest door. (laughs) I think from listening at this door, it seems pretty clear that it's another tank, um, and it's hard to tell how many more that there are uh, from what information you have available. Um, It seems like these tanks are up against, like, the ground above you. Like, the... 
soil and rocks above them are kind of compacting into them and perhaps some of the gas has been like seeping out basically through the punctures over the years um and there's there's no telling how many of these there are or how um far on it goes um you can also see that there are still there's still a lot of machinery in here there's still a lot of stuff in and drop in like warnings and stuff like addressing like neutralizing the gas um it seems like you would need some kind of control panel um like there's some sort of mechanism in here where they can release um a catalyzing like agent something to make will, it inert yeah, yeah render the gas inert did we walk through a room with beepy boopies yeah at one point I uh, you found some minimal beepy boopies, but uh, you didn't find any real major beepy boopies just yet. All right. <laughs> okay, Kira listens at this door and surmises all of these things that uh, <laughs> Sam has shared, um, and then turns back to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are the chances we can convince everyone in town to wear one of these masks? Like sixty percent, probably. Like sixty percent. I think if we could beseech the deity of Rastor himself to come down wearing a mask and instruct the people to wear a mask, we're probably looking at a good 30, 35%. 30%, huh? Where are we? Yeah. <laughs> Waters. Wait, if we have enough masks for everyone in Yadenve, why isn't Asher wearing one? No, no, just the three people that we like. We're just going to share around. <laughs> Speaking of which, Asher, can I get a fort save? I had a suspicion you'd say that. Oh, it's on the floor. We're going to let Red Fang wear two masks on top of each other, and then the uh, last one goes to that kid that we made invisible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 26. Ah, 26, you're so good. What do you want to do, big stuff? Uh, did I have a sense, Sam, at all of, like, any of these doors being better than the others? They seem to all be tanks. Right. Um, so, guess we're going with the one in front of Kira. Like, we're just going to keep smashing until we find a tank? Is that is that our plan? I think we're going to keep smashing until Asher dies of uh, poison, but... <laughs> I wonder if it's worthwhile returning here after exploring the rest of the ruins... It's possible we may come across something that might help make the bad water great again. (laughs) You mean like if we can find enough nanites to cover your face with healthy air? Maybe, yeah. We should should definitely look for that face nanite option. And, you know, worse comes to worse. Tanks for the memories. Maybe whatever we need to do to make the air not bad, we can do from somewhere else in here and then come back when it's better. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a good plan that we're all in consensus. And Brixby is just disking yeah, out of... <laughs> just <laughs> zooming away. Brixby is yelling this down the hallway. <laughs> Great plan. Capital everyone. idea. Uh, Fort State Asher. Uh, dress number 27. Hey, right. the dress number. That means Asher magically gets a dress from somewhere. Um, but now that we're out here, we can close this door, right? You can indeed. So, okay. Sadly, Kira and Asher are still in there. No, that's what I mean. When I say we, I mean Alwyn and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's what Asher would have wanted. It's true. <laughs> and all right, presuming you are now out of the continuously venting area and now just in a gas laden part of the ship with a door closed um let's have asher give me another save oh uh, one for the road and probably one for the next few minutes <laughs> uh ooh, lowest one so far 19 <sighs> you're getting close but that's a pass yeah Speaking of 19s, that's what I rolled for my perception on the the, the, the old nanite door, making that a 33, 34, if there is a hazard that could be classified as high-tech or mechanical. 
Uh, there don't appear to be high-tech or mechanical hazards on this particular door. What's uh, the opening sitch look like? Uh, looks like you can um, open it the sort of same manual way, like it's a power door with no power, but you can still open it. All right. So can't open it again. <laughs> As part of that sweet, sweet perception, did I hear anything on the other side of the door? I can roll a second one if you want me to. Uh, no, it didn't seem like there was anything on the other side, or at least nothing moving or talking. Or... Uh, well, yeah, it all seems good. Uh, Asher, I, I know you can take the gas, but I forgot last time that uh, I have an ability very similar to the Boof Boots, and you know, we should consider a quick escape uh, if, if we find ourselves... Trapped and gassy. Yes, that's wise. I haven't taken these for a boof yet, but I guess there's no better boof than the present boof. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we share a long, knowing look, and then both turn to Kira. Up, Kira's, Kira's bashing. You don't have to bash this door. You can just open it. Kira's bash it. bashing. Bashing. <laughs> <laughs> this one's halfway off its hinges before uh, <laughs> Kira realizes you can just open it. Like, oh, well. Okay, if we need to close it for gas, we'll just prop it up. That's a joke <laughs> for the audience, listeners, and mm-hmm. Sam, just in case there are evil nanites behind this and we need to close the door. No, that was canon. It is a joke for our audience, J-Rod, one of our audience members who we all like so much. Yeah, you think I forgot last time when I said that we're going to uncomfortably hyper-focus on one person from our Discord every episode? Congratulations, J-Rod. Because I did until I re-listened to the episode 45 minutes ago. (laughs) Until I heard it just a second ago. Asher, in each hand, has one revolver drawn and loaded with mundane rounds. So does he have any hands free to roll a fortitude save? Uh, no, but thankfully the player behind Jeff. Whoop. Yep, that's no, that end. No. Jeff has hands. Oh, no. <laughs> the player behind Jeff. That's terrifying. <laughs> it's just Jeff. Gimli. Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to say, it's suddenly we all saying. realize the marionette rings in the Skype cam. Uh, another 19. Dangerous. Yeah, you're skirting that edge, but um, Asher's okay for now. Now, as you open this door to the nanotech laboratory, the walls of this large room are lined with dark panels of glass, tiny buttons, and other mechanical devices. A set of metal tanks sits to the west, while a chair mounted on a swivel on a short platform sits to the northeast. To the northwest, a section of flooring has been ripped away exposing a tangle of metal plates and coils and machinery and brightly colored cables. Two round tables sit in the room center and spots of some kind of long since dried oily substance are kind of dragged across from the doorway over to uh, one side of the room. All I heard was cable management and I'm dying. (laughs) I heard tiny buttons. For those at home, Sam is absolutely broken our spirits because we now wait for the entire flavor text before anyone even touches roll 20 at this point it's i was just like (laughs) i was waiting for like all of this description and at the end and a gearsman is in the room you think i would have learned that by this point but there's so many times because sam's wonderful with it for the folks at home or he'll walk into the room he'll give you the flavor text you're all like coordinating yourself and then he's just like gm later reveal by the way, you're in the same square as a CR9 enemy. So, yeah. it Brixby gets punched in the I face. I was like, it's usually Brixby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's usually Zach who was in here on his coffee break. <laughs> Cross and you're through screwed. And doomed himself. <laughs> Pile of cables. I'm going to throw a knowledge engineering at that hotness. I will also. Oh, yeah. It's a it dirty 30. Ooh. Ooh, I don't even know if I need to do that. You know what? Maybe I could just aid you. Because <laughs> that's really required. One second here. Yeah, I aid with a 26. 
All right. Well, Asher and Brixby, the engineering team, know that the exposed flooring in the northwest corner of the room is revealing um, plates and cables of some kind of immense power conduit capable of accepting chargers, whether it be a vat battery, a generator, or reactor, or, you know, like a recharge spell sort of thing. Um, it looks like somebody consciously decided to do this, like broke it open to get to the conduit. So would we be able to, like, recharge the uh, charges we used on our mass batteries at this thing? Or? It's the opposite. No, there's no power in the yeah. ship. Yeah. We need to power oh, right. it is, or have the capability yeah. of... Yeah, we need a generator. Okay. So what else is in this room, then? We got the oily streaks. We got some circular tables. Swivel chair. Oh, Swivel and chair. Uh, Alowin rolled a uh, 21 engineering on the tiny buttons. Um, it looks like were this room powered, there's all sorts of machinery here that might or might not work. Um, it's hard to tell what it does without any power in it. Um. <clears throat> uh, you should be able to basically hook a battery up to the conduit. Do we get the impression with our 32 of, like, is this, like, trying to power a nuclear sub with double A's, or are we going to be able to just hook a battery to it and get at least a little bit of juice going? Uh, seems like you could probably bring some stuff up for a little while with a couple batteries. Uh, probably not one battery, but if you've got a, a couple, you might be able to at least get the room up and running for a little while. We have 21 batteries. So, uh, what do y'all think? Pop a couple batteries in here and see what turns on. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. So, when you say a couple, is that in the, like, truest sense of the term? Like, pop in two? Or, like, a small handful? Yeah, I, th I think if you, um, you probably gotta connect it one at a time. So, like, you put one in, and the battery drains, and, like, nothing comes to life. But if you do a second one the same way, it'll kill the battery, and then all these little screens and buttons and stuff will start to light up, and the room comes to life. Uh, this might be wasteful, but we throw a third. Uh, Brixby puts a third one on there, just to see. Um, it'll take the charge and suck all, up all that good, good energy, but it, it all looks the same. Probably you just kept it running a little longer. All right, all right. So, uh, shall we all spread out, nerd out, see what we can figure out? Yeah, um, numerically my nerdage is low, but I can look at stuff. All right, roll, roll for nerdage. Um, well, while you all are spreading no. out and um, looking around the room after you've brought the power up, a voice, a disembodied voice, calls out from the corner of the room. I don't mean to interrupt, but have you word from my master? Ho ho! <laughs> oh, it's Sasha. <laughs> Sorry. Shroud. No. Loud. Loud. Jowd, jowd, let it all out is the other dude. <laughs> this is. This, this is, is Sasha. Coco Melon, his invisible friend. <laughs> okay. I am indeed Sahasho. Does this mean that you were sent? By my master. How are you and your master these days? <laughs> I asked that first before you asked me, so I should get the answer. This first. is a peculiar question. Just want to know. I mean, it should be a simple yes or a no. I assume that's you know. cool, because yeah. you're still yeah. calling him master and not like that jerk or. Yeah, we're cool. Everything's cool. Um. Brixby's super into work-life balance and just sort of wants to make sure that you are happy where you are right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in a room underground. It could be better. Certainly, and, and that's why Zaud sent us to inquire as to your progress. And I'll roll a, a bluff. I'm going to help, even though it's not necessary. Oh, yes, it is. 
I have element AIDS. Cannot miss. Yeah, I ate as well. Well, that's that's gonna bring my twelve up from with those two AIDS to a sixteen because <laughs> I rolled my lowest d twenty of the evening. Uh, speaking of which, why don't you give me a fort save while we're just you know while yeah. we're talking? Oh, moving back up, dirty twenty. <laughs> All right, Sahasho says, um, "Curious that um, he would send you to check on my progress. That I have no orders beyond guarding this place." Are you sure that's what he told you? Yes, by pardon me for my my speech. Uh, by progress, I meant an update on whether you, anyone else has come in, and you've had to, you know, defend the place. Um, well, you are the first in several years. Um, so he hasn't forgotten to come back, or he's he just sort of out there he reg- he is regretfully quite occupied with other things but he has never for a moment forgotten you Jout is very proud <laughs> he speaks of you all the time when there was one set of footsteps on the beach <laughs> <laughs> that's when he carried you yeah like when you look at his refrigerator He's, it's just covered in little blank pieces of paper. They're all portraits of you. <laughs> um, that, I mean, just like empirically speaking, I'm I'm invisible. That this you can't have a portrait of. You can't see me. <laughs> oh my God, it's I'm waving. I'm waving right now. <laughs> Uh, does he know when he's going to be coming back? Because this is this is very tedious. So, in your <clears throat> uh, your diligent vigil here, have you uh, discovered anything? Now I know you said that you were just told to guard, but 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 you know couldn't blame you from going uh, out of bounds as it were and, and trying to do a little bit around it you know you get bored but i've been trapped in this particular room for the entire time i'm it's been several years i'm not sure exactly how long but the orders were to protect this place so i have protected this place the power ran for several months after my master teleported out of here um said that he would be back in a few days but he obviously he has not returned and no one else has been here except for you and the machines outside which never bothered me but i assume all the noise was you disposing of them and some doors yes and you know if if you were invisible you could just walk right by them there how does that work for doors? Well, yeah, the doors, you you gotta open those. Gotta bash them. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll be quite pleased to hear of your continued vigilance. And in fact, I was saving this good news for last, but he's asking that you meet him. And we are going to take over this guard duty for the time being until he himself is fit to return with you. Or what? Another bluff. <laughs> <laughs> I will aid them again. Uh, a three on the die, so I aid. I very much aid with a 28. Golly, why um, am I rolling? <laughs> also an aid. Well, I, all those aids bring my 15 up to a 21. Um, And you there's no face to see, so I can't narrate any facial expressions. But he says, uh, the master would know that I cannot simply leave here without a direct order from him. I'm magically bound. I believe you all might be lying to me. What? No. <laughs> That's it. We're just uh, like- Asher, in the general <laughs> direction of the voice, is going to detect evil 
Um, no, no evil. Awesome. Look, 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 look. Right, right. Listen, I didn't want to make you feel bad, but what we are here for Shout, he just didn't. He didn't actually mention you, but it's kind of awkward that we walked in and. I knew he forgot about me. Yeah, it's so weird. We were really just trying to. You know, we were. Messed up! It's so messed up! <laughs> we have a contract, and you can't just leave a guy for years. I mean, I think it's an at-will employment country, Numeria. I, I'm sorry. I, Regardless, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, look, you can sit around and, and wait for direct order, or you could maybe see the fact that he possibly sent a second party here as a potential vote of no confidence. And I, I, that, I'm not saying that personally. I'm looking out for you. To be honest, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I was lying before when I said he had a picture of empty space that was meant to be you on his desk. He actually assumed you were dead, and he sent us as your replacements. See, well, that other thing that he said is, is probably true compared to what I just said to you a second ago. No, it might <laughs> sound like two different stories, but... Um, no, isn't that I what you just know. said? That you, no, that you not really, his, but it's, oh. it's, the truth is somewhere in between. <laughs> you know what's but, like Genesis 2 and 3? Just You might see them as different creation stories, but... Which one had Peter Gabriel in it? Was it book 2 or was it book 3? It's a little Genesis joke for all the old people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Drive a Hyundai. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this has been we're good. living in a land of confusion right now, but... <laughs> I must confess I am quite confused right now. But listen, it, one way or another, it, I, it doesn't really matter. I, I hate the guy. All right, he's my master. I hate the guy. He left me here for years and years. And whether he forgot about me, whether he went out there and like took his little dead body on a to his dead body farm or whatever he does. I don't care. I just want to get out of here. And you guys get me out of here. Can you describe... I mean, first, the dead body farm, I'd like to put that off to the, the side for another <laughs> conversational topic. But just pursuant to your original point, because we have a very terrible track record of releasing people from subterranean imprisonment, <laughs> what keeps you here? Specifically, I'm bound by a pact from a a spell of um, I believe the official name of it would be a planner ally a spell. He secured my service, uh, paid my fee, and he secured a rather regrettably open-ended contract uh, to protect him and escort him through these ruins, uh, help him retrieve. The dead body and then to protect this place until he returns can i dismiss you um can you cast dismissal because that would hella work it, by that i mean like dispel magic can i dispel you that's the word i want which is a spell i have which is it's not the first one i don't think you can just dispel a planar ally spell i think it has Fair. to be like a a thing that sends somebody to another plane or like back where they came from kind of thing but i can hmm. just say dismissed like no not not if you're not furkish out no and you're not to be clear i know that you're not so don't like pretend to be i met him at least could you <laughs> could you describe this dead body. You know Shout and his farm. He's got more than one. And I'm curious to see if maybe this is one that we've seen at the farm. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a approximately female presenting but like an android. Um, she had like uh, green hair. Uh, looked like she'd been dead for quite a while. Uh, like a big old hole right through her uh, like she got shot like with a big old gun kind of thing uh, he called her 
Cassandra Lee, um, he was really, really excited um, to see her. Like, I don't know how he knew that there'd be a dead body here and knew her name and knew um, who she was and was like over the moon to have found her. But, you know, he grabbed her and um, repowered the place, messed around for a bit and then decided he'd take her back to his tower and uh, told me he'd be back in a few days and teleported out of here. And how many years ago was that now? Um, see, the problem with being in a a room with no lights and, like, no day-night kind of thing is I have no idea. It's been a long time. It's been <laughs> several years, but, um, not centuries, at least, because I'd, I'd probably be incoherent if it was that long. Probably. Question from Jeff, the player, uh, not the player behind Jeff. <coughs> What's the, do we know in game how recently Cassandra was said to have stolen the Neurocam? Like, I'm trying to piece these events in the proper order. Um, I don't think you know. Um, you know it was likely sometime before Hellion was even created. Or um, certainly before he came out into the world. But you haven't ever really gotten a good notation of how long ago that yeah. was. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because even Hellion's, like, we know is like several months to maybe a couple years at the longest, right? From when he, since he's only been in Scrapwall. Yeah, he'd only been in, long. in Scrapwall for probably less than a year. So you don't really know, but um, sometime before that. Uh, I rolled a nine for a 19 on my knowledge points. Can that tell me where Yu Yu Hakusho is from? <laughs> Um, I think with a 19, you can be pretty confident that Zahasho is an invisible stalker, which is an outsider from the elemental plane of air. Oh, yeah. You do the big murder there. Yeah, I had one of those uh, kill a uh, teenager's PC in a game I ran for my work. (laughs) Well, luckily, this one's super friendly, or at least super confused. I wonder, uh, friend Zahasho, you know, with how powerful casters like Master Zaud, they live in the tower for a few years and then they get bored and want to check out a different tower. I'm not sure if the tower he's in now is the same one he was teleporting to back then. Uh, And he did say that he may have left a scroll at his old tower. Could you remind me where that tower is located? And if you need me to, I'll bluff again um yeah why don't you bluff and also fortitude save <laughs> i'm gonna remember every time you volunteer to roll something all right i'll start with the way. fort There's gas in here too all right fort's a 24 okay how many aids are we looking at plus two hang on if i'm throwing bubble one i'll aid okay I, uh, that's another aid all right, that is only a 16. I am rolling great on non-bluffs. Actually, I have a... Uh, uh, Joe the player has a mechanics question. Can you fail an aid roll? Um, I mean, mechanically, there's nothing that... There's no penalty. Yeah, there's not like a... I mean... You rolled a nat you, one. Uh, you mean? Does a natural one fail no, no. an aid roll? On skill checks. Okay, then I don't need doesn't. to roll. I just auto-aid. On uh, bluff checks. Um... So Sahasho thinks for a second and says, I mean, I he cast a spell to summon me out, outside the town of Idenfey, so I have never seen his, his choking tower, but um, I assume it's a tower that, like, chokes you or, I don't know. He's, he's a weird guy. Did, um, did he tell you anything else about this? choking tower like what it looks like or did he give you a napkin with a map on it that's maybe just an x 
Even a sandwich label. Yeah, we're really good with those. No, not... Didn't even have the decency to leave me with a sandwich label here. Which, um... You know, it would be fun reading ingredients, I guess. It'd be better than nothing. But, um... I don't know, he was all into, like, smoke and wind and gases and stuff, but he he didn't, like, really talk about himself much. He was just like, you know, open that door, Sahasho. Go, don't let these things kill me, whatever. That guy's a jerk, man. And you don't know anything else about where he might be. No, he... Just like he's a big jerk. We know, of course, where he was, because he sent us here, but but where he might have gone then, you know. Yeah, it's weird that you guys have so many questions about the guy that you know so well, but... No, not about him, about you. Yeah, we like listening to you. You know, you're like an invisible talker. It's great. You have so many stories, uh, probably. Oh, the stories I could tell. Like, this one time, I mm-hmm. was just sitting here in the dark, and I thought I heard something. What? It wasn't anything. Man. Please tell us 34 more of those stories. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so many that were basically that. That's, like, totally crazy, and I'm listening while I roll this engineering check while the batteries are running right now. That's so... <laughs> crazy. I roll 19 for 35. (laughs) Uh, What's the engineering check for? Just like the buttons and everything else that is lit up temporarily while we're having this conversation with... (laughs) Uh, Well, it looks like while you're messing with the machines, um, the tanks on the south side of the room are uh, some sort of nanite fabrication nodes, like construction nodes, but They appear to be non-functional right now, even with the power you've given it. You don't know if, like, there's gonna... There need to be more extensive repairs done to actually use this as, like, an operational uh, nanite development lab. But uh, you do see that there are sufficient terminals in here with control over uh, this ship's onboard systems. And, um... If you're messing with the terminal, you can see that you are aboard the Aurora. Do we see the, you know, counteract gas yes button? Because we'd like to hit that one. Um, it looks like the um, there are instructions on there for how to disable the mutagenic gas, which, you know, it's got some Androphin name that's not nearly so menacing, but I don't have that handy. Uh, looks like it's the sort of thing that's going to take some fancy computer skills, maybe a disabled device check kind of thing. Well, I could do that. Let's just hopefully roll as well as I did before. No. <laughs> it's a dirty 20. Um, yeah, that's not sufficient. And that um, that's just like a few seconds of banging away. It doesn't really work. Like 18 seconds of work kind of thing, but... Uh, Brixby hits a dead end. Looks like he needs to start over, and Asher needs to roll another fort save. My lowest roll yet, a 17. Ooh, hits the DC exactly. <laughs> I can literally only fail on a 1. That was a 2. <laughs> nice. I thought that was probably the case. Um, but, you know, there's a 1 on every die. Some say there are more on Jeff's dice. They do say that. <laughs> Uh, I roll a 20 for a 36. Uh, With a 36, um, after doubling back to the beginning and while uh, Sahasho is regaling the story of the time that there actually was a rat, but it turned out that he was asleep and he had dreamed the rat, um, Brixby manages to release the neutralizing agent and neutralize the toxic gas in those remaining canisters. Yeah, you just got to apply a group policy to all of these canisters. I it's thought just... inheritance was blocked. Did you, <laughs> did you do loopback? Is it loopback? It's always loopback. 
No, wait, I, I heard it was always DNS. Anyway, that's enough jokes for... Yes, you've got to flush that resolver cash. <laughs> I had scavenge set to 24 years. Well, that's your problem right there. Uh, so, I this has been... records. G- great. This has absolutely not been the Aurora Borealis at all, talking to you. <laughs> anyway, uh... It's like like we did everything we need to in this room. The gas is gone. We should just. What are you whispering? Nothing. Oh, you know, whispering a a prayer to his deity to thank him, him or her or them for this opportunity we had to converse with you. Um, are you gonna like help me get out of here though? Like yes. I told you told you all that good stuff and like the story about the imaginary rat. Yes. No, that's... When we report back to Master Zaud, we'll remind him that you're here so he can dismiss you. The direct order. And is that simply just saying, I release you, Sahasho, you've fulfilled your mission? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I wasn't sure. I've never, I've never been like the summoner. I wasn't sure if you've been summoned before and if there's an actual spell that he'll have to cast, just in case he hasn't prepared that for the day. I don't think so. It's just like I fulfill my duty, and he says I fulfilled it, and I can go back to the plate of air where, you know, it's not so claustrophobic. Question. Just the uh, gun of silent image. Can we... We have to see something to make it a silent image in the first place? Do we have to, like, scan it? Or can we yeah, just, like... To, okay. You have to sort of take a picture. Could we take a picture of a hologram? I don't see why not. <laughs> and then just have ventriloquism. Do you want to take a picture of like him from the security camera? <laughs> and is it going to be like this big though? And like <laughs> and from the wrong. He's going to stretch it out. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to be like Zach wants to do a singing in the rain. He's going to be like now. I know none of you can see me, but I'm in this <laughs> video that you have. <laughs> yeah, Asher is going to just assure him, like you know. Master Zout's powerful. He may even be able to come. You know, if we si- if we can get a message to him, we'll we'll get him to come as soon as possible. He could just teleport back here for all we know. He's so powerful. Uh, you want to roll a, a bluff on that one? Yeah, I do. Jero and I both auto and probably another fortitude save. <laughs> uh no, the <laughs> gas is neutralized. Oh yeah, yeah. you did it. Oh, well, finally a good roll. Is anybody uh I ate Yeah, you get AIDS auto aids from both Jero and I. Okay, so then that brings us to I'm gonna do some math, stand by. Thirty three. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> he goes Okay, just like if you could come back down here and like yeah, if you could just, like, let me know or, like, uh, come in on Sunday to, like, you know, right, we'll, we'll give loop a back status update. Touch base. We'll circle back and um, pursue that, That's it. good. You, yeah. Just Definitely ask him if he read my email. Um, we'll be back in just a couple days. It's just that he didn't send a read receipt, so. Oh, my. What? So unprofessional. And I, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um. You keep an eye out for rats. <laughs> Brixby just leaves the room. And at least with this door open, you can get some fresh air, and maybe maybe a, another rat will, will come by. That'll be cool, huh? Yeah, look forward to that rat. We are going to be back later. All right, it, it's been real. So Take care of yourselves real. out there. <laughs> you too. You suck. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's good. It's all the kids are saying it. Well, it, in the plane of air, we we mostly blow. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you leave the room and poor, poor Sahasho behind. I mean, we're getting better at this. The first time this happened, we killed them in the middle of a conversation mm-hmm. with a surprise round. The second time we waited and came back like a day later and killed them. This time, maybe we <laughs> won't kill them at all. He's got at least a week. Nope. 
<laughs> Make your peace with your rats. <laughs> Maybe we won't kill it all. No. Maybe you'll just leave him to suffer under the earth forever. <laughs> the, the far more compassionate thing to do. All right, so uh, now that, like, it's not all gassy, sh- shall we bash? I mean, yeah. like, the royal Go we. Break other... The royal Kira. Just, just the one we, really. <laughs> just the... yeah. you. Oh, if it's the royal we, okay, Kira, hand him the sword. <laughs> the, the royal you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see over here without the gas to worry about you can bash your way into all of these tanks and find them in various states of collapse and um, gas free and it looks like you know Iden Vey has been slowly coming in and making friends with the insides of the tanks um, it looks like there are probably more tanks that are completely buried and crushed beneath the earth at this point. Well, provided that the half-life on this isn't particularly long, I'm sure it'll be good <laughs> for them in, like, a little while. We just gotta, you know, get all poison into the water for it to get out of the water. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> Silent Spring situation <laughs> we got going on. all the poison first. <laughs> um, okay, so... <clears throat> Anybody have any feelings about any of the tanks that we've bashed our way into? The one to the southeast, which Brixby walked into, goes nowhere. Yeah, uh, Alwyn just kind of did a circle of the four that it looks like Kira's in now that all just connect to each other. We walk in all those tanks and we get the achievement that pops up and says we explored 100% of the area. Yeah. yeah. Tanks for you all the memories. the area. Got a little mm. picture of uh, Duriel from Diablo 2 on it, and it says, Congratulations. Checked all the fake tubes. Yeah, is it worth rolling, like, perception on any of them, or do they all just kind of look like gas tanks? Yeah, they all just look like they were gas tanks. Uh, so that's it. We've looked at every door now. We went into the Nanite Lab, which was the last standing one. Um, yeah. Yeah, you've cleared I the place. I don't think there was... Yeah, there was nothing we passed further on that we didn't look at, right? No, I mean, uh, when Asher saw that achievement, he started walking out. Okay, so... If uh, if we're done here, if no one has any objections, kind of want to see if we could use that image device in the hologram we saw before to possibly release this person and get at least one little tick in the W category for the liberating underground prisoners of interdimensional like. Oh, we're, we're actually going to try? That's nice. That's nice. I like that. A uh, question for the GM. Uh, if we want to try that, the person that's like doing the voice work for that, what would be that role? Um, <laughs> probably a bluff. <laughs> You have that little... Would it, be, would it be a bluff or would it be a disguise? Well, actually, no, my bluff is higher anyway. Why would you bring disguise into this? Uh, who has a <laughs> higher disguise than a bluff? A vigilante. Uh, yes. Oh, my Mine is only one lower. My disguise is a plus 12. Uh, yeah, so can we go out, like, coax the machine to do the the hologram, do the recording, <laughs> yeah, you can hit give the, it a try? Hit the touch screen and um, get that picture of... Fergus shout. Um, I am talking into the computer. I'm curious, how long did it take for us to walk just from the nanite room to here? I just wonder whether we shouldn't like come back tomorrow or something. So he's not like, really? Five <laughs> minutes? It, it, it turns out he was in the other room the entire time. And it's less than 200 feet long. so He has no <laughs> perception of time. For what it's worth. <laughs> like, we at this point could gaslight him into thinking it's any time or any day. Because yeah. he's invisible yeah, and he comes back into the fake beard on and like, I'm sorry it took so many years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, worst he could say is no. Right? And then we're like, okay, enjoy a turtle imprisonment, I suppose. <laughs> like, or he's like, this can't be real. And he tries to murder us and he's invisible. All right. So it doesn't take a, a role to 
record a little image of Fergus Shout. It is going to be two dimensional, um, <laughs> just because that's all you have. You have the little two D video of him. You can make a little video. So I, <clears throat> so listen. There's clearly limitations to this technology. However, there's also magic that is similar to this. So we tell him that this is a projection of Zout from another place. Uh, and that, I think, would not only allow us to maybe smooth over why he lacks a dimension, but possibly why the voice is weird. Um, okay, so Kira will hold one of those thin sheets of metal to make thunder sounds, uh-huh. and then use an elbow to flick the lights on and off. And that will be my part. I am the first of four wizards that's going to visit you. <laughs> uh, so... Who Don't wants worry. to do the wizard voice? Uh, I think I have the highest bluff. Right. I'm down to eight. And I eight automatically because I have a plus nine. Yeah. What is what is yours? Plus what? Nine. Same. So I auto oh, nine. Okay. Same as Jeff. But okay. I don't know how we're going to auto aid unless we're like, you tell him, Zoud. Well, yeah, you guys aid by saying, by lying and saying that it's not a, pre- that it's not a recording. It's a live video feed. You, that or we there. are also like <laughs> making sort of ethereal ambient noises or like yeah, the thunder under, sounds or like we're all saying the same stuff <laughs> at the same time to make it sound creepy and otherworldly like you know that's how it's I also it. like operating the projector and like Kira's <laughs> making thunder noises with a sheet of metal <laughs> yeah lots of foley work <laughs> just kind of working out the the lies and pinpointing the voice ahead of time, I guess. All right. I also aid BT dubs. It was a very effective thunder sheet. Got a plus six. I'm going to say, you'll get a plus five because the target wants to believe you, mm-hmm. but a minus ten because the lie is far-fetched. All right, so a plus one. So it's a it's a net minus five from the those circumstance modifiers. Well, then I'll just give you... And then our plus six from yeah, eight minus five. brings yeah. it to yeah. a yeah. plus one. Yeah. So that's plus a, one. That's a oh, net plus one. Oh, so that's a pot. Okay, so it's a plus 14 to this roll. Okay. So I guess, is everybody else already in there with him, even though the tokens are out here? I, I assume yeah. we're all kind of like <laughs> by the door being like, oh no, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Good news. We were able to contact him. Here he is. That was awfully fast. I know. I'm impressed as well. Usually, you know, you call him, and then he doesn't answer, and then maybe he'll call you back later, but probably not. Uh, So Halloween rolls a 28, and he just uh, doing his best uh, Zoud impression over the radio. You are free. Was that very loud? Yes. <laughs> it's a little startling. <laughs> I found one that said uh, that said radio static and tried it and was it awful? No, you almost freed my bladder. I can't. As well as our- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was fine. Um, I just was very spooked. <laughs> and what did you get on the uh, modified uh, bluff check? A twenty-eight. Uh, 14 on the die, plus my 13 with the net 1 from the plus 6 and the minus 5. Well, sadly, after rolling no better than a 5 on any previous sense motive for Sahasho through the whole conversation, I rolled a nat 20 Oof. this time for a total of a 32. Because he actually uh, has good uh, sense motive. I was just rolling garbage. So uh, Um, So... Sahasho goes, I know it's you guys. I I could see you. This was this was really mean. No, we just wanted to give you a show. No, it made it worse. It'll, you we can were think back. Trying on this. to free you without having to go all the way back to him. We thought maybe this might be quicker. Has well, anyone ever expounded the virtues of <laughs> suspension of belief? What? Yeah, you'd be a terrible thing audience. <laughs> Whatever, I didn't want to be free anyways, you jerks. Why is he Clarence now? <laughs> <laughs> I lost his voice. 
It's it, so sad. Everything just becomes Clarence after a while. Yeah. Amen. It's a law of entropy. Yeah. Well, we tried. We literally did <laughs> yeah. the only thing that I could imagine, aside from like, I don't know, like trying to dress up one of the dead robots or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, imagine if he did believe it, but because that's absolutely not how the spell works, he still wouldn't have. <laughs> that would have been yeah. so sad. <laughs> how sad that would have been. <laughs> I mean, that is there is a good chance that Sim could have ruled it that way for sure. Yeah, like yeah, I'm sure the like GM fiat you could have said okay, and he and he gets to go home. <laughs> well, I said I was going to be extra mean, didn't I? You did say that. So if, we, so if we had crushed it and he failed and he had failed that sense motive roll, would he have just poofed back <laughs> to the plane of air? I would have to have made a game time decision because uh, I don't think that's really how the spell works nope. um, <laughs> it really isn't, absolutely isn't not at all. it's your game <laughs> but at the same time the sort of placebo effect <laughs> you know could it be more powerful psychosomatically <laughs> than, than the magic itself <laughs> he manifested his own dismissal yeah you know it's the yeah, secret. he spent all his years here reading uh, <laughs> yeah the <laughs> that's what he's been <laughs> That's what he's been doing all this time. Cast a little gust of wind on him before we leave. All right, goodbye. That's, that's your last taste of the plane of air. See ya. Oh, my God. Well, that's real sad. Honestly, this is the first time I've been kind of bummed out by the fate of one of our NPCs. Well, I tried. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can just go beat the dude up and make him release him. I don't think he has to be near him. I think if he just does it, it'll happen. I mean, he's in the like name of the book, so he may be a boss. But if we beat him up yeah. and he dies, hypothetically, maybe maybe that'll do the trick. Or he's yeah, dead and hope. we can never, ever release him again. Yeah. I don't... Again, I'm sure... Uh, sorry, we've already hyper-focused on one of you in the Discord, so I can't actually name... But somebody in our Discord is probably like, well, actually, because you all know this game so well. Any, anybody want to say anything to the sad, invisible man before we go? No, Asher's already climbing up out of the well. <laughs> yep, we gotta <laughs> sahash go. <laughs> all right, so you all sahash go on out of the Aurora, and um, climb back up into the town of Iden Vey, newly freed of its mutagenic gas issues, eventually, theoretically. And you're, you're on that empty farm. Brag about that to the newspaper guy, right? That we were the ones that... <laughs> He's going to find a way to fix spin this. it. <laughs> I hope you already have that written, Sam. Otherwise, you have, like, ten minutes. Oh, uh, yes. have to do something during the break. East Palestine, <laughs> on Bay, Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Too soon. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm glad somebody, because I have been avoiding accidentally making that joke the entire time. Don't like, worry. Consciously. I got it. <laughs> don't you? To, if, if taste is getting in your way, don't worry. That's not an inhibitor for me. All right. Um. So, uh, where are you going? That didn't take I'm, too much of the day. Um. Huh. So, we need to learn about this tower. Yeah. I don't suppose a knowledge of geography would let us know about a smoky, windy gas tower. Um, hey, you might be able to do a knowledge geography. Um, I think you all absolutely beefed your knowledge locals on Fergus Shoud before. That was before we knew his first name. Yeah, what about his tower, oh, though? Oh, yeah. It was like the la looking for <clears throat> the knowledge local on Smith, and then we didn't know which one it was, you know? Yeah, you could do um, a knowledge geography or knowledge local, or you could do, you know, diplomacies to try to see if anybody in town knows anything. I rolled an 18 for a 29 on my knowledge live in La Vida local. And I got a 26 on my national geographic. 19. Linguistics. Uh -huh. Linguistics? <laughs> you know that those are both things that were said in common. Uh, and Alwyn is just kind of hanging out outside the hole, uh, working on his bracers. Just um, projecting Zhao in other places and making statements. As <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So I think Brixby, um, it makes sense that Brixby would know this since he's been sort of all over Numeria. Um, and then Asher just sort of seems to know where things are. There's a, um, where is it? It's east of here, about 50 miles. There's a forest that used to be called the Dreamwood years ago until somebody built something in there that just bellows smoke into the sky. And now the place is usually just called the Smokewood. That seems like a sort of place where a choking tower that, from a guy who's all into weird smoke and stuff. So we go back to Torch, buy a fourth mask, (laughs) and then we go to the woods. I don't know. And the the dot on the radar was north, not east, or would that kind of line up with the dot? No, the dot's north. This is not the dot. Hmm. But the body farm doesn't have to be the tower, either. Right? Like, that is another thing to consider, because he literally said body farm which makes me think of that one that's in the southeast that they use for the the bodies with the yeah for like the csi training yeah yep (laughs) you know what i'm talking about the decomposition farm he might have just Mm -hmm. been saying body farm as like a for instance as like what do you use a corpse for Oh, no, he's narrow elemental. It's one of turn those of, yeah. common turn of phrase. Just, you know, <laughs> when you're in the plane of air, you see a dead body, you, you farm it. Yo, he's dumb as heck. I mean, I know he's an airhead, <laughs> but like legitimately though, he is without a doubt one of the stupidest outsiders that we've met up until this point. He could have been smarter and has slowly been taking like wisdom damage and intelligence damage from just being locked in a room for years. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, he first. first experience on the material plane was being summoned to a beautiful forest and then he got locked underground for years. <laughs> and that's all he has. Well, now that everyone's nice and depressed, though, about Sahasho, and um, you got some leads on where the body of Cassandra Lee, apparently dead, has been taken. Seems like time to go to bed. Good night, Sam. Cassandra leads. Night, Good night, Sam. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Sam. Against the Machine is property of Network Against the Machine, LLC, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are property of Paizo Publishing. See their website for more details. The theme Against the Machine was written and performed by your own Zach. See the show notes for additional music and sound licensing. If you enjoyed the show, we encourage you to leave us a review. Go Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only actual play podcast that bashes open a giant canister of cat... Of... Of cats? Cats! <laughs> a giant canister of cats. Oh, we're in Sam's house. Don't worry, gonna say, cats. We're breaking we're gonna into get Sam's house. out of there. Oh, no. I have an idea. Remember that big light coming out of the mountain in that town where we all met? If we had some sort of range extender we could suck the power out of that and use it to power this i'm sure the people in town wouldn't mind if the torch went out he's coming get him (laughs) we all finally power we get what we want even though we know he may or may not be dead uh oh maybe he's been nick shari all this whole time Mm. yeah could be come back down here and like let me know how long it's gonna be maybe that'd be I'd appreciate it. Yes. that was terrifying that? I heard that <laughs> <laughs> something <laughs> fell above my head oh that was terrifying <laughs> um fashion <laughs>